120 volt inside. Nope, there's 126. On those two sides, 125 on those two sides, and dead in the middle. Just got to figure out our sentence. 125. What's going on, bee herders? Um, out in the shop today, uh, doing a little work out here. Still working on it. Thought I'd give you guys a little tour uh, of a little bit of what's going on. We've come a long way since the fire, almost a year ago now, thanks to many blessings from God and a lot of good friends. We've got a lot of work done. Um, so I'll give you a little tour here in just a minute, but I wanted to show you this major project we're working on. If you've been watching our videos, you saw, saw a uh, few videos back. I think it was in the uh, assembling frames with a frame jig video. I gave you a sneak preview of uh, a device we purchased to help us with all of the comb that's left over after all the removals we do and old comb out of hives and cappings and that was this device right here that is a growing ee40 steam kettle typically used in commercial restaurants for big batches of whatever you need to cook whether it be boiling potatoes or vegetables or sauces or chili and soups um, but designed to heat quite rapidly um, large quantities uh, of liquid. So it holds 40 gallons. Um, these things are extremely expensive if you try to buy one new, but God bless us once again. And, and we picked this one up on, uh, I think it was Facebook Marketplace for a song. Need a little work, still needs a, a few parts to dress it up and make it look better. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but it's fully functional now. Um, and we're going to melt some wax in it, melt some old cones from, from some removals in it here today. Um, now don't try this at home. Um, I'm no electrician, even though I'm doing all the wiring in my shop, trying to make it look neat and professional as we go here. But um, I do study a lot and I know a lot of smart people. I'm surrounding myself with them since I'm such a big dummy. But anyhow, this thing draws a ton of electricity from the plant. Uh, it comes designed for three-phase power running on 240 volts. And it pulls 101 amps um, set up that way. Now, it, it has a kit, and this one had been modified for single-phase power. Um, it just puts a bigger terminal block in it down in there. Uh, what we did to make it work for our use, because I don't need it to, to heat so fast or so hot, is it comes with six heating elements, just kind of like what's in your water heater. Well, we disconnected three of those heating elements, and that put us pulling in about 42 to 43 amps, which I can run efficiently, efficiently on a 100 amp surface. So we've got that set up, the thing still heats quick and will still boil water so I can still cook in it if I want to but I just need it really to get up to no more than about 155 160 degrees max uh, for melting beeswax is it, it it melts Freya saying hello hello Freya Freya this is the craziest loving cat um, but beeswax melts in the high 140s around 147 degrees so I don't need it to get much hotter than that I don't want to overheat the wax and certainly don't want it to get to its flash point, which is right around 400 degrees. So I think this will work. We'll stick our comb in the top, a little bit of water in there, um, a screen to kind of catch all the, the scrap that comes out of, out of the comb, little cocoons and dead bees and whatever it happens to be, trash, pollen. And then we'll, when it melts, we'll be able to drain it off via the drain right there. So we'll show you a little bit later what, uh, what that's gonna look like uh, and take you through the process and give you a review on what we think. I got the idea off the internet. If you guys don't follow um, Ed Horshoff, um, I'm sorry, Jeff Horshoff, Mr. Ed. And once you see his videos, you'll understand why they call him Mr. Ed. Great guy, ton of resources. Um, but anyway, he has one of these in a propane version and he's been using it for a while and it works like a champ. So that's that, we'll get back to you 
more on that. You can see we've come a long, long way here in the workshop portion uh, of the new building. We've got some of the lights hung overhead. They were out of stock for how many I needed, so I've still got to pick some of those up. But this will be where we do most of our woodwork and standard shop around the house, changing oil, working on vehicles, and whatever it happens to be. Um, it's needing to be done. The father and grandfather and a husband, there's, there's always a, a million honeydews to do. Um, there's our stainless steel work table. But we'll have water and power and, and all kinds of stuff in here. Still got a metal brake for trim on the outside of the building. Um, but this is the main shop. And then over in this section, we started wiring on it yesterday, so things are a little cluttered, but this will be the honey house. Fully set up, waterproof commercial kitchen when it's all said and done. Um, bathroom in here, water, and the extractor, and, and anything required for, for honey extraction and processing and, and all of that type of the beekeeping world will go on in here. You can hear my brothers flying overhead and the Lakotas training new pilots this morning. That's sort of my full-time job. But it's coming along. If you remember our video from June 27th of last year, everything went up in smoke and we had to start back from square one and the good Lord bless us and allowed us to grow and, and actually build this shop the way we want it. So a lot of, we're gonna do a lot of how-to videos in here um, and hopefully that'll help those new beekeepers and sideliners like us who are trying to make a little money off of keeping bees instead of spending a ton of money. Um, a fellow once said, if you want to make five million dollars, or make a million dollars rather, uh, with honeybees, you just start with five million. And boy, ain't that the truth. Uh, honeybees are not cheap. <coughs> but you have to be able to turn it into something. So, so one, what started out as a hobby is turned into a business, but if you still consider it a hobby, and at least it kind of pays for itself at some point. I don't know what that point is yet, but we'll get there. All right, some more to come, and we'll get back to you on the... There it is. Working in reverse on the wax melting uh, kettle over there. Soon. All right, bee herders. We've got her set up. We've got her ready to go. We can put some screen on the inside. Uh, we're going to load it with cone from some cutouts. Some of the stuff's kind of funky because I've been storing it in tubs. And I haven't had the ability to freeze it like I used to, so uh, it's not pretty, but there's still plenty of wax in there that we can get. Um, hopefully this screen will keep all the detritus, all the slum gum from gumming up the works in the drain. Um, we've got quite a bit of it we're gonna get shoveled in here. We'll turn her on and let her go for a few hours and see what we've got. We've got about four, maybe five gallons of water in it. This is the first run through, so we'll adapt our technique as necessary as we go. Here we go. about all we'll put in it for now. We'll bring the temp up, let it melt down some, and then we'll add some more. If 
He's humming. All right, that should be about 100 degrees. We'll go just a little bit past that. And we'll hit it with the laser thermometer here in a little bit. Well, hopefully I don't have every bee in the neighborhood here in the next few hours. They can't get in there anyway, but they may make it difficult to do anything else. All right, we'll check back with you in a couple of hours and see how she's doing. Uh, I'm praying this gives us a quick, easy ability to process a lot of this this cone, get it, and we can run it through multiple times uh, and screen and filter it until we've got pretty clean wax at the end. But uh, we're going to learn together on this one. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, it's been a few hours since we uh, fired up the steam kettle here, melting this wax. Um, it's running along pretty good. Uh, we actually added another big tub of comb uh, to it. And in the meantime, we we'll worked on some wiring over in the honey house section. And uh, then we got a swarm call and some other stuff come up, so we had to turn it off and just came back home and turned it back on. But just to kind of show you where we were or where we are, you remember I had it jam packed to the top full of comb um, and then added another large tub of comb after it settled and melted down some brought it back jam back to the top and you can see how much that comb has melted and settled already so I think this is going to work out pretty good we've been playing with the temperature trying to get it right I mean what I've been doing is I'll drain off a little water and then hit it with the laser to see how the what the temperature is and just trying to get it around 150, 155 and let it help work slowly. So we'll keep following up on it. Um, I'll kind of show you as we drain the wax off uh, probably tomorrow now, um, kind of what that looks like. Stay tuned. So this has been an ongoing process for the last couple of days. So much stuff was going on. Um, I've not kept it running continuously. I've turned it off at nights after the fire last year and being as I had to do some modifications to this thing, I, a little reluctant to leave it running while I'm sleeping at night. I guess you can imagine why. But anyhow, it's working great. I've got to modify my filtering system a little bit um, and I kind of felt like I was going to have to do that. Um, but we've been continuously adding comb to it and letting it mount or melt down. We probably, we added about four more gallons of water, so totally it's got about eight gallons of water in it. Um, but you can see now, it's better, right around half full, and there's still quite a bit of wax in here and slum gum. But some of it's got out of my screening system, and that's causing problems with the, the drainage. Um, but we'll work through it. It'll be okay. Uh, we've been playing with the temp constantly to get it like we want it, and... I'll drain a little bit of water off the bottom and hit it with the laser, see what the temperature is, and then put it back in there. Um, really trying, at least on the first run through of the wax, to stay below 170. Um, let it go low and slow. That'll keep the wax from discoloring. Once you get up, a, up about above 180 or so, the wax starts to discolor a little bit, and the hotter you get, the more it discolors. So we'll get as much as we can without it discoloring, and then I'll bring the heat up and add some more water to get the rest of the wax out of the remaining slum gum. So we'll keep you, keep you going and we'll show you what we come up with when we pour it off. All right, so here we are draining off some wax. We've got to shift it on this dolly that I made for it so that uh, I can set the bucket on the floor. But that'll be something for another day in the tractor and some help. You can see it's melted it down nicely. Still a lot of wax in here to harvest, but we'll get it off. There's like a chance. Nothing like a good deal on Facebook Marketplace. What's going on, bee herders? I uh, just want to get the last video installment here for our 40-gallon uh, growing EE40 steam kettle use as a wax processing device. And I got to tell you, I'm thrilled. We're still working some kinks out of the filtering um, and the process portion of utilizing it. But uh, it, uh, I'm thrilled. It's a whole lot better than anything else we've had. Like most people, um, you know, we started out with a crock pot. And then I built a big 
solar melter. I mean, then I said, hey, I want a steam melter, so I built this fancy contraption uh, out of a uh, wallpaper steamer. Um, and then the shop burned down and all that was gone. So we're back to square one. But I knew all those were okay, um, but we had outgrown all of those. Um, crock pot too small, solar wax melter. I love it, but you're depending on the weather and time. Um, the steam melter, really cool, but you know, really uh, mastering the design of it. it was getting to be a headache. Um, but this thing, this thing, it's a bomb. Um, so we've processed since that initial video, which is, will be at the beginning of this, um, we've, we've put a lot, a lot more comb in here. Um, and we're down to that now. Uh, I'll take you over here to the, the fridge and I've thrown what we've got so far in. Uh, and there's probably that much still in there. So there's what we've processed so far. And there's every bit that much wax still in there to come out. Um, but like I said, we're still working through the filtering process. I've got to build me a bigger screen and, and work out some kinks. I'm sure we'll do another video later on down the road. And we'll do a lot of things with this. Um, but, you know, we, we drained off via the valve, um, and that works okay. you got to get a lot of water because that wax is floating on top of the water. Uh, so you got to work down to the wax, or up to the wax, I should say. Um, and we've taken a small one-gallon bucket and got off the top. That gets your wax a little bit quicker. Um, but either way, it's, it's working like a champ. I'm absolutely in love with the thing. Totally out of my price range if I were to try to buy one of these new, way, way out of my price range. But patience, prayer, and blessings from God, and this thing popped up uh, on Facebook Marketplace for an absolute song, and I don't sing very well, so you know it must have been a really good deal. Um, I can't thank good Lord enough for, for providing with this. So that's how she works. Y'all keep on keeping on. Take care out there.